Hi, welcome to another edition of Interviews with Hunting Masters, brought to you by the OutdoorInsiders.com. I'm your host, John Stallone. And this week, uh, we got a really good friend of mine, um, Billy Babish, on the phone. And uh, Bill, Bill and I have hunted for together for years and known each other for years. Um, uh, I, I actually worked for Bill for a while, and um, you know we've uh, we've done a lot of hunts together. Billy, um, I mean personally on a personal level, he's I don't know one year that he's gone without getting a deer, um, and he does things differently than anybody else I know. Like he's got different tactics that um, I've I've never actually tried, but. I know they work for him and we're going to talk about those things and give you guys another uh, piece of the puzzle to help you be a better, uh, when this, this week we're going to talk about mule deer hunting. So what's up, Bill? How are you? Well, pretty good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, why don't you give yourself, uh, give me a little rundown about yourself uh, for those who don't know who you are and uh, what you do and maybe uh, go into how you got into hunting and whatnot. Yeah. I was born and raised here in Arizona, lived here for 47 years. I've hunted here my whole life. Um, you know, started hunting back when I was uh, six, seven years old, you know, started bird hunting. Did a lot of deer hunting, rifle, coos hunting for my dad. And uh, just kind of went from there, you know, and I did a lot of rifle hunting all the way till I was good 20s and wanted something a little more challenging. So I picked up a bow and started bow hunting, you know. And the main reason I did that is so I could get a mule deer. I'd shot so many coos that I wanted to change it up a little bit. My dad always hunted coos, and that's all we did. So I got a bow and just started mule deer hunting. Of course, I go out. My first deer I kill a coos with my bow. You know, <laughs> it was a, it was crazy. So I've been doing that, you know, and I hunted and hunted and hunted, and I finally decided, you know, I'm just going to start my own guiding business. So I opened up, I run and uh, operate out, Letter Rip Outfitters. We hunt all over Arizona. And, uh, that's about it, you know. I, when I'm, I do have a regular job to do. <laughs> I don't just guide. A lot of people just guide, no. Off season, I do, I work at the post office. So I do have another job. Yeah, well, you know, it's tough to be a full-time guide, I think, in Arizona because of the draw system. Um, I feel like, um, you have to have a very, very large pool of hunters wanting to come hunt with you because at any, you know, if you got a hundred people and only two people are drawing every year, you know, it makes it tough to have a, um, you know, a steady income just from guiding. And plus, you know, if you, if you don't have, uh, the ability to guide, uh, you know, out of state or Mexico or something like that, where you could supplement, it gets real tough. So exactly. that's kind of, I know that's why I, I never wanted to get into outfitting. Um, or really didn't like <laughs> guiding too much either. Cause then I always want to be the guy behind the trigger. So, but yeah, you know, and that's the thing, you, know, you don't get to hunt that much either. You know, a lot of people say, well, of course you get me with you all the time. You're a guy, you know, yeah. I, killed more deer before I was a guide <laughs> than I do now because I had a lot more time to hunt, you know. Right. You, know, you only get a couple days here and there. Oh, I know. Hiding, so every time we went hunting, you're like, okay, I got four guys in between this this guy and this guy. Four days in between this guy and this guy. Let's go get it done. Let's go kill a deer. And that's usually exactly. when you seem to get it done is that, you know, that couple days in between clients or the last four days of season or whatever. So yeah. Nah, I know it's it's tough, and that, that's definitely something I don't think I can I can do. I mean, I I do take some satisfaction, like you know, taking out friends and family and whatever, and being a part of their hunts, uh, and, and helping them get. But I I couldn't. I don't think I for strangers. I don't think I could do it. And um, number one and number two, uh, I don't think I could be a, not be the hunter that much it would drive me nuts so yeah it's it's pretty rough you know having it's it's just it's a rough job yeah <laughs> you know, everybody thinks it's all, it's all easy and this and that and you know 
how come these guys shoot, you know, 70, 80 inch deer and you seen a hundred inch deer, you know, there's just a lot of stuff yeah. that go in with that, you know, and that's just another whole deal. Well, that's, that's hunting. That's uh, guiding coos deer, man. I think the biggest issue with that is, um, and the guys that I've taken out, uh, friends of, especially from out of state or whatever that never hunted, um, that they have a really hard time finding deer in the scope. And that becomes like the biggest challenge. They're just not they're They could be the greatest shots in the whole world, but when you put them behind a gun, trying to look at a little, you know, gray spec, you know, 500 yards away, it's just in, in a tangled brush and whatnot. It just never, uh, it never seems to go the way you want it to. So. And by time they, by the time they do find it in the scope, it's either gone or, you know, something, yep. you know. Yep. And it's just, it's, just, it's hard to explain. You know, yeah, no, for sure. Well, I got a few questions for you. Um, I've kind of been asking this of a lot of my guests just because um, I, I get a lot of different answers and it's kind of a, it's kind of a good general question. Um, give me three things that you could attribute your uh, consistent success to. Well, the first thing is I generally always hunt the rut. That's when bigger bucks are out, you know, and that's the main thing. I always hunt the rut. I mean, I do hunt in August, but usually I fill my tag in December, January, so I don't get to hunt, you know, the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. I always hunt the rut. And uh, patience. I mean, you got to have – bow hunting's frustrating, you know. It, it, it can drive you crazy. You know, you yeah. can do a hundred things right yeah. on one stock and it only takes that one thing to screw it all up when you're done, you know, yep. and it's just, and just keep them persistent, you know, just keep at it, keep doing it. Don't give up. You know, never, you can't give, you can do stock that buck 10 times in one morning, you know, just don't mm -hmm. give up. You know, you, there's mm -hmm. a point to give up and there's a point not to give up. Right. right. Knowing, knowing when that is. Obviously, obviously, yeah, when he's running, it, when he's running into the next unit, it's probably a good time to give up. But yeah, a lot of times, yeah, yeah. yeah like if they got a lot of does, you know, they might just run over one ridge, and then you give them some time to settle down, you can get back on them. Um, I know that's well, uh, that's that's where it comes. The way I hunt is probably different than a lot of people. Right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, well, probably, I probably. When Go I ahead. bow hunt, mule deer, I probably break every bow hunting rule there is, you know. Yeah. As for being quiet and the wind, and I don't, you know, I don't use that stuff. I know. You know. That's crazy to me. <laughs> crazy to me. Yeah. I, I, I remember the very first time I went hunting with you, I was like, this guy's a fucking loony bird. I'm like, <laughs> I, I thought for sure you just carried a freaking fold up 300 in your backpack and. We're just killing them with that and just saying you're killing with the bow. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, people, you know, they, how, how'd you get that book? And I'll tell them, they'll be like, oh, you're so full of it. Come on, really, how'd you get it? No, really, that's what I did, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, that's just. Well, um, since we kind of led into that, I'm going to skip my next question and I want to, I want to, I want to go into that. Um, let, let's get into how, how you typically your uh your walkabout style i like to call it the the wandering the wandering yeah. uh tourist style of hunting exactly well you know it's not i have an area you know it, it could be you know i try to stay within two mile radius mm -hmm. you know i'll get out and i walk i don't i'm not quiet i walk i just walk and sometimes people are like man you walk fast they'll see me over here and see me over there Walk and walk and walk until I find a deer. Right. Ninety-five percent of the time, I'm, I'm busted. <laughs> I'm busted yeah. because they're, you know, yeah. I walk on them. No big deal to me. You know, if they're headed north or south, let's say they're going south, and I see that they're going south, and they stop and look at me, and if I know at that time, well, I'm busted. He's looking right at me. I don't stop because if you stop and have a stare down with him, think, and you know, maybe he don't see me more than likely he's going to take off. So what I do is I kind of back off, make a big circle around him, you know, try to get out in front of him, 
about 200 yards to where there's a, you know, that safe zone and uh, kind of keep a, you know, I try not to make eye contact with them, just let them think that I, you know, I don't see them and whatever. I'm kind of watching to see if they settle down or whatever. And once they start settling down or start moving back to the south, you know, I'll sit and wait for them and see what happens. You know, a lot of times they'll come through thinking that I just took off the other way. Um, if they don't, I just tighten up my circle, you know, and right. sometimes I'll end up pretty much, it sounds weird, but confuse them. <laughs> you know, they, they sm they seen you over here. They smell uh -huh. you over here. They caught a glimpse of you over here. And before you know it, you're behind them. Right. You know? And I've had deer so, so confused where I was doing circles that they ended up just coming right to me. And that's, you know, they always make a mistake. You know? Yeah. Um, sometimes, you know, you just, if you bust the buck and he takes off and he's headed, you know, what's he going to do? Is he going to keep going north? Probably not. He's going to keep, they do the same thing. They circle around you. You know, he's going to go out there a couple hundred yards, make a big circle. And if you can place yourself in between him and if the does are still there, you're, you're set, you know, mm -hmm. and that's, that's what you try to do is get in between because he will come back. You know, and I mean, I've, like I said, every single buck I've shot, I've probably been busted by. I mean, there's just every single one. I don't think I've ever snuck up on a buck and shot one, you know, without him knowing. I've always right. been busted first. Right. You know, that I can think of. I mean, I'm sure I've got lucky here and there, but, you know, and the wind is the wind. I do, you know, if I can, but. You know how it is in the flats. That wind, you can start on a stock and that wind starts swirling and it's, it's, it's no good anyway. Right. So if I'm doing a stock, if I'm doing a stock and the wind starts going towards them, I don't stop. You know, I just use a shade lines or the wash or whatever and hope for the best. And most of the time it works out. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, another thing that like, I remember you were telling me and actually I was standing there with Ricardo and you, he was, he was explaining to me what you were actually doing is that you kept walking circles around this one buck. You didn't end up getting them that day, but you got close enough that you probably could have gotten them had the, had he given you a good shot opportunity, but you just kept walking in circles, walking in circles and making that, that loop tighter and tighter and tighter you were out maybe i don't know 150 yards 200 yards and by the time you got back around the second time you know you were at 75 yards or whatever and um yeah i guess like you said you kind of just confused them or whatever <laughs> it was just you know didn't really leave that area and you know and that's that's the thing you know people you can't really it's hard to explain i mean like you were like like you said, you're crazy, you know? Yeah. You've seen, you've been with me, we've done it, you know, I've showed you and you're like, what the heck, you know, what the heck are we doing? And you know, and it, I do it with my clients, if they're willing to do it with me, they yeah. think the same thing. Okay. Well, what the hell? And then they're like, wow, this, you know, this, this works. This works. You know? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just, it's something I've always done. I've done it since I've been bow hunting, you know, 25 years or whatever. And I don't like the glass, you know, I, I glass so much from October to December anyway for coos. Right. Sure in the heck don't want to do it all January anyway if I don't have to, you know, and I yeah. always feel I'm missing something out there. So, but yeah, um, it's a, it's a crazy. <laughs> I'm, it's cu a, I'm curious it's to see if that, your, I'm curious to see if your tactic works in, did you ever try it up up north, like in Flag and like the Ponderosas and stuff like that? Did it ever work up there for you? Or I know most of your bucks well, are that's what bucks. I was, Yeah, that's what I was going to get at. You know, you can go up in 27 where it's, you know, mountainy and whatever. Can't really do that there. You kind of have to do like a normal bow hunter. <laughs> okay. You know, come up behind yeah. them and stalk. You know. Same yeah, but like, like, you know, by Flag and stuff. Yeah, so like, but at Flag, it, there's a lot of areas where it's, yeah, you're at high elevation, but it's flat, like especially Flagstaff, you know, you got these big expansive, you know, mesas of of Ponderosa. I'm wondering if, I mean, you couldn't do something like that, making the circles or whatever, um, 
in an area like that if you got on a buck. So I used to still yeah, hunt. Yeah. I used to still hunt up there all the time, and I shot. I mean, I probably shot five or six bucks that way, but they're. I mean, they're all little bucks, nothing you know, forkies and stuff like that. I never actually shot a big buck, um, still hunting ever. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to yeah. see if that would work I, or even in a different state where you have, have a similar, you know, type terrain as the flats, uh, here in Arizona, uh, if that would work, I, I don't know have, if that. I have bow hunting in New Mexico where I've done the same way. Okay. And, you know, and, by Rio Dosa, which is kind of like our, you know, Flagstaff, <clears throat> and you know, it, it works. It worked there. Like I said, I don't get to hunt that. I'm usually done in January, and I hunt the desert, so I don't really right. get to go up north. If I don't fill my tag, I usually go up, you know, maybe 27. Um, every yeah. once in a while, and not very often, but um, I did hunt New Mexico, and I did it that same way, and it it, it works that way too. Um, cool. Cool. Um, well, so obviously that's hunting for yourself. You like to hunt the rut. You like to hunt archery in the rut. What do you do in the rest of the year, to, you know, for scouting and keeping tabs on deer for your clients, um, you know, for those rifle hunts and, or even, even those, uh, you know, early season bow hunts and, at early December when they're not necessarily rutting and kind of just roaming around. Well, you know, it's, I, I, the 36 units are right here. They're, you know, I'm only 30 minutes away from them. I'm right. pretty much out there all the time. You know, um, I've hunted them for, geez, you know, 30 some years. And I used to keep a journal, you know, of what time, you know, what they did and did that for, Five, five, six, seven, eight years, you know, and mm -hmm. just kept going back, reading over it. And after I started reading this journal, I'm like, you know, it's everything's the same, you know, the patterns, everything, yep. just, yeah, they're just all patterned out, you know, and I, for eight years, you know, big bucks would come in, you know, between just throwing numbers out there between the 10th and the 15th, you know, and, um, you know, between 10 and 12, they'd water just it all. It was all the same for eight years, you know, and it's been that way since the, you know, late nineties, early two thousand. This has been that way every year. Right. Um, right. We do our, you know, the white tail for clients. We got trail cameras, of course, you know, um, we put trail cameras up. We're, we spend a lot of time out there in August. Try not to in August is, you know, so damn hot out there. And the damn but, Mojave's. <laughs> that's i used to when i was younger i hunted dogs all the time <laughs> not no more well that but. that yellow grass wasn't so high and crazy the way it is now i don't like i don't remember when i first started hunting down there back in the late 90s it looking like the african savannah and now it's like i, f I feel like it's completely well yeah completely, you know but quite a bit different than it was well we've had a lot of fires up there too you know and that um, yeah, it's bad. I mean, you, you go, even in the winter time, it's still up to your knees, you know, and by the time you're done, you're so dang wet. It's like you jumped in a lake, right? you know, you get out there in the summer and you can't see those snakes and the yeah. best thing to do is not even go there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's scary. It's a scary, uh, scary endeavor down there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Especially since you're not very close to, uh, to any medical help and you know you get bit by a mojave i guess if you got hit, bit by a regular rattlesnake and you know you got some time or whatever but you got you get bit by a mojave it's you know that's dire straits right there you need to get that <laughs> you need to get that taken yeah, care of know, right away half an hour <laughs> and you know me and both of us you too you know we hunt a lot by ourselves anyway you know when we are hunting yeah and you're yeah you're pretty much sol you get bit by one, so. Yeah, no, I get but, it, man. I'm, I stay, I stay, actually, I try not to hunt the desert at all in August anymore, unless I'm going to sit on a water hole or somewhere. I know I'm just like, it's, I'm going here to there. I'm not going to be crawling through, I'm not going to be crawling through the brush to sneak up on a buck, you know, and come face to face with a freaking rattlesnake, <laughs> you know, but, uh, 
No, and that's the thing. And that's the thing. In August, anyway, it's so hot. The best thing to do is sit a pond, you know, especially for coos. You know, those those yeah. deer come in. It's, it's just we don't have no rain. And like the last couple of years, we've had had much rain up there. If you can get a good pond, you know, that's yeah. the best thing to do and avoid all that. But then you got to still walk, like you said, you know, the ponds that I use, you still got to walk a mile to get that pond through that grass. <laughs> yep. No, but for sure. Yeah. For sure. That's when you got to go in there with a weed whacker, trim yourself a path all the way to it. And and that way you can see what you're walking on. I've been telling you to do that for years. I know because that gives away your spot. <laughs> those ponds, yeah, those ponds that nobody knows about. Like, yeah. Exactly. Well, like, start oh, the trip. Yeah. Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Started. Uh, you got to start it in 50 yards where they can't see it, and then and you know, <laughs> then you just got to walk through 50 yards of grass. So yeah, but but yeah, yeah um, I um, uh, you know, I wish uh, you know, maybe what we'll do if uh, this year if I get a chance to come down and uh and film you while you get to hunt. I'd like to kind of maybe put something together so people could actually see, um, you know, Billy Crazy Legs' uh, tactic of uh, of getting in on bucks. It's kind of it's neat, man. I've actually I did that this year. I was on a traditional stalk. Actually, had Anthony talking to me on the radio, and man, I was on this buck, and it's one of my one of my target bucks too that I've been kind of watching all season, and finally got him got him in a good spot, and I just ran out of cover, and I'm like, fuck, what am I gonna do? I'm like, I'm gonna do Billy. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a Billy style right now. So I just kind of started walking at him, but not at him, and I wasn't looking at him. And he still stayed in his bed for a little bit. And then he finally stood up and he's looking at me and he's looking at me and I'm not looking at him, but I'm just kind of like looking at a corner of my eye and I cut that distance down and I probably could have got a little bit, I, sh I know I could have got closer, but especially since his doe was still bedded down and she was below him and he couldn't see me because of the rise. Um, and I didn't know that. I knew I found that out after the fact after she eventually got up and left after I shot at him and missed. Um, but I got to I got to a spot where I'm like, oh, I can make this shot. And I probably could have easily got another 10 yards and it would have been a slam dunk shot for me, I think, broadside. Um, instead, I took a longer shot. And I literally, I mean, I gave my hair cut. But it worked. Like, I, you know... Uh, I did that, uh, you know, lost hiker, especially if you're in areas where that where they're used to seeing hikers and stuff like that. They're not necessarily going to bust out of there, especially if there's a, you know, a hot doe that's not even up on her feet yet. You know, you got mm -hmm. some time. Um, yeah, and I just beat myself up about that because, like, had I known about the doe, because I had never, I never saw her before I left, and Anthony never said nothing to me about it on the on the radio that there was a doe. Um, actually, maybe he didn't even see her, but when I glassed him up originally before I made the stalk, I, he looked like he was by himself just feeding. So anyhow, um, I didn't have that information, but had I had that information, hell, I probably would have went another 20, 30 yards closer because he would have yeah. never left until she got up. He was you know, and they, they don't. If, yeah. if you sit there and stare down and you have a buck sitting there looking at you, like I said, you, and you know you're busted, it ain't going to do no good to stand there because that's, he's really going to get nervous and he's just going to go. Um, it's just, you might well just act like you didn't see him. Just walk away. Let him mm -hmm. think you're walking away. You're really not you're just moving to a different area to get around him, you know? Yeah. And like I said, if you have to, I've, I've done circles. I mean, I've done circles on one buck for four or five hours. Yeah. You know, just the circle just keeps moving North or wherever I'm going for miles. You know, it's like, man, Am I gonna ever get in on this book? You know, it's just a circle staying at hundred yards. We're not right. we're not doing this. Right? And uh eventually, you know, you get frustrated, it's like you're getting hot. Like, all right, I'm gonna do it one more time, do it, and next thing you know, here he is, you know, he's conf he's confused and <laughs> he's walking right to you with his dogs and yeah, it's done. You know, and that's Yeah, I, I think too, like when you get those really long ones like that, eventually 
in his head, he's like, well, this guy's not a threat. It's been an hour. It's been, you know, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, and he hasn't done anything. So I'm not really going to – I'm going to keep an eye on him, but I'm not going to be too concerned about him. And that's when they let their guard down because they're still, you know, focused on the does or whatever, and that's when you get them. This guy, I didn't even like – I mean, he was he was up on a ridge about, I don't know, it was just a bump. It wasn't like a ridge ridge. And he was he was up about halfway up the up the ridge, and I was in this bottom. And instead of going straight at him like this, I kind of went like this. So I was still getting closer to him, you know, just cutting the angle. But, you know, I didn't even do a loop or anything. I just kind of, you know, didn't go straight at him because I didn't want it to show aggression. I just started yeah. kind of walking, look, looking like I was going in the same, like on a direction that was going away from him, but I really wasn't. I was, you know, slowly but surely getting closer yeah. to him. You know, and I walked normal, yeah. and it really wasn't. And I pulled out, or I pulled out an arrow at, while I was walking, so I wouldn't be standing still for very long. Um, and knocked the arrow while I was walking. You know, trying not to break stride, and 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 not stop and pause at all. And then I grabbed my rangefinder, which I always, you know, carry like like my binos, you know, right here, easy for me to, uh, to access and, and let go when I don't need it. And as I was walking, you know, my range finder is good enough where I, I can hold on to it and it'll, you know, just keep giving me the range. So I had the range yeah. and then I stopped when I thought I could make the shot. And I, and I, of course I didn't cause I freaking whiffed it, but, um, See, and I, yeah, I don't need, a- I carry a range, I carry a range finder. And I, know you I don't think I've it. ever shot. <laughs> I don't think I I've ever used it. I use it for, you know, oh yeah, he's 130 yards. But once I get it, I get so focused on that book. Once I get in that range, you know, mm-hmm. I forget all about the range finder. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I've had, I got a grunt tube I carry. So when I do get in position, uh-huh. I'll throw it in, you know, stop him to get the shot. And I've gotten so focused on him that I've forgotten to, I pulled back, forgot to drop the you know, the tube out of my mouth, shot my bow, my arrow went. I'm like, what? And seen something fly. I'm like, what the hell happened? Well, <laughs> I had the tube sticking out and the string hit the tube. <laughs> I've done that twice. You know, after hours of stalking, yeah. I go and blow up because my my tube, you know, and I've done that with my water pack where you're, you know, not oh, the tube, yeah. you pull back the tube. You know, I stopped using I stopped using those bladders for that. That and I really don't like the way they make the water taste. They make them really taste real plasticky. But um, well, yeah, yeah, I've had that but happen walk... too. That water tube <laughs> getting my way. Well, that's so. why I stick it underneath my strap now. When I know I'm going to do a stock, now I stick it under my strap because that that was a bad deal. It just did knock it right off my cams. I was done first day. Oh yeah. So, but I derail the boat quick. Stupid. Yeah, yeah, stupid stuff, you know. Like I said, you can do a hundred things right and finally get in there after four hours stock and just make one mistake and it's over. You know. Mm-hmm. And during the rut too, that's the other thing. During the rut, you find these this buck you want. I'm usually you set on one buck, maybe two. You only got about three to five days to stay on that buck. After that, mm-hmm. he goes finds another girl and he changes everything up. So you don't have much time. But if you right. do the same thing too, right. the other thing to think about is. is you go and do the same thing every single day. You know, you know he's gonna come out of that wash at 7:30 in the morning. You do it for three days. So I mean, I just did it this year. I had this big buck, and I said, well, you know what? I'm gonna the fourth day. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get there before before light, half hour before light. Park. You know, my ranger. And right when the sun gets ready to come up, a little bit before, I'm gonna go and get beat him out. Mm-hmm. And this is like fourth day I'm chasing this buck around that I haven't got yet. So the sun, it got ready. The sun came up, and I said, "All right, it's time to go." I put my pack on, grabbed my bow, and I looked where I parked to the north of me. I'm going south because this is where this buck is, and there's a deer standing. I'm like, "What in the hell?" It was over before it even started. That buck had learned my pattern and <laughs> did the same thing I did and beat me across. And once he was over there, you know, I knew I didn't have a chance. Never got that buck. You know, he, he had figured me out before I could get him. I've had that happen quite a bit, you know, after so many times of doing the same thing. Yeah. They know that and they start moving earlier or they start moving later or whatever. For sure. So, yeah. You got to educate them quick. It's, um, 
you know, a lot of what you do is, um, is playing on the behavior of deer. And it's something I kind of been preaching to people for a long time is, you know, if you spend a lot of time learning how, what, and why deer do what they do or elk do what they do, you're definitely going to improve your chances, um, you know, come hunting season. Um, I think it, it's a perfect example that you know that deer are going to do this, 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 and that, and you just – compensate for it and, and make sure that you're in the right position i mean you're like you're not you're not trying to be sneaky you're not trying to you know like you said you're just you're watching what they're doing and and you are reacting in a way that you know is going to eventually give you an opportunity um i think it's yeah. a it's a cool way well, it's a cool way to hunt because you're it's very proactive I, th I think a lot of people uh would enjoy you know, because some people get bored with, you know, sitting behind the glass or bored with, you know, sitting still or definitely bored with sitting at a water hole. Um, you know, I used to love still hunting, which is basically what you do, but you got, you've added a lot of, uh, uh, of science to it and it, without even knowing that you're adding science to it. Um, and it's just always, always a fun way to hunt. I was just never good at it. Um, you know, I never thought to do what, the things that you do or I never accidentally figured it out. I'm sure that's probably what happened. You accidentally figured out like, shit, that worked. Next time I see oh, what yeah. this you I mean, that's how most of us learn is we, we get into a situation, yeah. it works. And then you're like, oh, you know, oh, I see the situation again. I'm going to try what I did last time and it worked. And so on and so yeah. forth. You start seeing your own patterns of what works and what doesn't work. But and after so many years of doing that, you know, and it works every time, you just keep on it, you know. And I, if, I don't know, you probably know this. And every time I see a big buck, and if I, you know, if I don't get it, I'll go back as soon as I'm done with the stock, and I'll, I'll always pull on my phone or look at my watch or whatever and see what time it was. Yeah. All the time. And it's yeah. 10:30. All right. So the next day, I'll try to be over there, you know, at 10:30 to see. And there he is. Yeah. And that, you know, I always when I get a buck that I find, I always look at my time and, you know, know where I'm at. And I always try to be there that next day, the next morning or next night at that time. And like right. I said, you usually get three to five days on a pretty good buck, you know, and that's about it. Um, they'll take off, you know, they'll go 20 miles and they'll come back two, three weeks later. Yeah. Then everything's changed. You know, you just have to start all over. But. Yeah, just keeping, you know, and I I remember telling you one time we were out there and you said, hey, they took off. I don't know if they took off, whatever, they went north or whatever. And I said, come on, we're going, we need to get to the right. And I, thought, I don't know if it was you, but I'm pretty sure it was. And you're like, what do you mean to the right? They always circle to the right. Come on. It, that was Where actually Paul. Right right. I was on the, I was on the binos. I was, I was actually kind of helping you guys you were with paul and you told him yeah they always go to the right and then i was like oh yeah yeah and they you know most of the time they do you know when i take off and if they take off to the north and i don't see them i'm mm -hmm. going right you can go left but i'm going right and i'll cut them off over there you know and it's always been like that you know i don't yeah. know if it's just a coincidence or what but they've always went to my right so, is that just in that area or yeah. just everywhere you go, you see that mule deer tend to circle right? Well, uh, pretty much, I guess, that area. You know, okay. when you get up in the mountains, it's a little okay. different. But down there in the okay. flats, you know, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. That's a weird yeah. deal. Just like everything else. <laughs> yeah. So, cool. And like I said, the wind, the wind to me doesn't matter. It, it just the wind's blowing right at them oh well it makes it harder yeah but i'm still going you know, <laughs> i've shot deer i've shot deer where they the wind is just blowing straight out and they never even look you know right. they put their nose up in there and smell around and i'm like man i'm busted you know i'm like i only got 30 more yards this is never going to work and it worked so, right because I had them so confused, like I said, you know, they see me over here, they spotted me over there, they smelled me over here, 
They had no yeah. idea. Right. You know? And, you know, you got to know what, and like you said, knowing the deer, you know, I hunt, the best days to hunt for me is Tuesday through Friday morning. Oh, yeah. Once Friday, yeah, you know, Friday afternoon comes, those deer are gone. Yeah, because they know where those the rest of their trucks are going to show up. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I know where they go. I know where they're at. You, all, you know, that's, that's that helps. You know, I know where to hunt on the weekends. I know where to hunt during the week. Right. You know, just knowing. Just got, there's a lot of, well, you know, there's a lot of luck too. You gotta have luck in there. Yeah. It's not all, it's not yeah. all skill. <laughs> so, a, a really good yeah, friend of mine, Dale Carter, which is, he's a very uh, well known whitetail uh, guide in uh, Illinois. And he talks about the luck factor and like, you know, says that 40% is uh 40% of its luck and 60% of its you know what you put into it and the, I mean I there's some truth to it I mean there's guys that I know that you were like you, you can't even imagine that they have any success you know they're the kind of guys that like take their bow out week before before season, never shoot, or they put no scouting effort, nothing, and then they go out there and they're just every year they they kill something, you know, just <laughs> and it's just like sure, you know, sheer luck that it happens. But yeah, there's a lot. That I, luck has a lot to do with some of it, you know. But. Yeah, I don't I don't shoot. I used to shoot all the time. I used to do 3D tournaments when I first started bow hunting. I used to do 3D tournaments and used to shoot all the time and. Now, honestly, I'm one of those guys. I, when bear hunting starts in August, my son will say, hey, we're going bear hunting on Friday. Well, I guess I need to shoot my bow Wednesday and Thursday and get it sighted and make sure it's all sighted in. And that's all I shoot. <laughs> that's what I do. All sighted in. And if it's good, it's good. You know, I don't like to shoot and shoot and shoot and then start shooting all over and then moving my pins and moving my sight. And then I got a big old mess. Right. I like to just know that I'm right. still on. Let's go. And people think that's, you know, that's crazy. You know, how do you even yeah. kill anything when you only shoot twice a year? I don't know. Well, once I've set up a bow, I never touch my sight. People are always fidgeting with their sight. They're, they go and shoot, and one day they're shooting perfect bullets, and then the next day they go and shoot again, and they're shooting a little bit to the right, and automatically they think, oh, I got to move my sight. Yep. Nothing happened to your sight. That shit's locked in place. You're shooting differently. If I go and I shoot and I'm not shooting well and my, my bow seems like it's off, I put it down. I'm like, I'm not shooting today. It's me. I'm doing something different. Yeah. I feel like I'm going through my steps or whatever, but I'm not. Something's off. I just leave it alone. So, um, you know, in that, in that sense, you and I are the same. I like to shoot off and just because I, I enjoy shooting, but I also like to have that confidence too. Like for me, it's a confidence builder. Um, I'm, I always try to make myself, um, present myself with shots that I think I'm going to encounter in the field so that when I'm there, I know I can make it. Um, that's kind of just my thing. It's been my thing and it's worked for me for years. Um, I have a pretty high success rate as far as letting the arrow go and killing things. Um, but not that I don't miss cause we know I do, <laughs> uh, but, uh, who doesn't, you yeah. know, who doesn't, yeah, Jesus. That's um, <laughs> we won't even talk about that one yeah <laughs> so but uh anyway yeah you know Man. i pull my you know the main reason i shoot my bow to make sure it's on um but you know just a couple of years ago i pulled my bow out and i was shooting all ridiculous i'm like what in the heck shoot shoot and uh took it down to bull basin and that's when that cam was bent oh yeah you know I had no idea. I'm like, and I didn't move my sights. I knew the sight was like you said, locked in. I knew everything was right, but it was just shooting all crazy. And I took it down, and the cam was bent. Yeah. Good thing I had shot yeah. it before the hunt. It was yeah. probably been a hunting with a you know bent cam, but um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know why people start. Like I said, you start moving your pins and your sights, and you, you just end up with the whole new set. You know, you're, you're screwing yourself. Yeah, you never, you never. Uh... You never learn how to be a machine yourself. If you can't replicate, yeah. if you can't replicate your your actions, I mean, a bow is a machine. I mean, it's gonna do 
as long as it's tuned, it's going to do exactly the same thing every single time. Uh, you know, that it's really hard to get your pins knocked out of place. I have, I had it happen before. Yeah. You know, I travel a lot and the bow gets th thrown, you know, I swear the airlines, they look at it and they're like, Oh, firearm, <laughs> they chuck it. But, um, yep. you know, so it, it's has happened, but it's not, something that happens very often especially nowadays on how well built the sites are and it's it's you and you just got to learn how to yeah. recognize that you're not having a good day don't fuck with the bow <laughs> you know back yeah, away no. from it give it a couple of days and then go try it again so yeah because you like you said you start messing with that bow and you get it all sighted in that day and then you go out tomorrow and, that's and now you're off way. again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not shooting four inches to the right. You're shooting four inches to the left. So, yeah. yeah so, no, for sure. But, I get it. Yeah, so, well, man, that's all I got for you is for, uh, as far as questions. Uh, where can our listeners find out more about you and Letter Rip Outfitters? Well, you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook. Uh, you can go to www.letterripoutfitters.com. Uh, and just look us up. We're pretty much on all those social media things. Follow us yeah. there. If you guys want to have a good opportunity of shooting a a bow uh, or an archery mule deer or even a coos deer, December and January in Arizona, give Billy a call. I mean, um, he's uh, like I said, he's very, very well versed and in tune with that area that he hunts he's been hunting it for as long as he could walk and uh you'll learn a couple of things stuff that you can add into your bag of tricks and use elsewhere um i think that's that's one of those things that you know coming up you know i've i've, I've had the opportunity to hunt with with guides i've had the opportunity to hunt with outfitters and guides you know all over the country um from time to time I don't get to do it often because it's very cost prohibitive, but when I do, it's always a great learning experience. And I think there's a lot of stigma going around out there about, oh, I got to be a DIY, you know, DIY hunter and da, 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 da. You know, if you're going into a new area or you haven't had success with a specific species, I think, um, hey, why not get a guide? It's Think about it as you're getting a, a person that's teaching you something because that guy's a guide for a reason because he has had a lot of success in his area and where he guides. Um, you know, go in there, not necessarily learn his spots. That's, you know, that's some BS if you're doing it for that, but to learn how he does it so that you can next time you go, okay, now I can go try it, be a deal, you know, do it myself and, uh, and you know, you'll be armed with some more intel as to how the guys that are getting it done every year do it because you get some hands-on experience. Um, that being said. Yeah, I mean, you can, uh, you, can uh, you know, I listened to your podcast with Chad and Travis and them last week and people, are, you know, friends of mine, like, what do you, you know what, the, you know, it never hurts to, hey, I want to know what these guys do too, you know. Exactly. Just every little bit of information, anybody, it doesn't matter if you've shot you'll do every single year and you know i listen to what chad, chad had to say travis and it doesn't matter you know? yeah. Still, listen we always day, learning you know? always learning i mean yeah 80 percent of the reason why i do right this podcast like, sorry go ahead yeah and chad and travis right now are probably like what man, this guy's crazy is that really how he hunts you know <laughs> but yeah but hell maybe, i guarantee i guarantee you if they're listening if they're listening in they're gonna try it because that's that's what <laughs> successful guys do man yeah. you gotta throw you gotta throw the book at them you know um see what, see what this guy's talking about yeah exactly you know hey they they get busted not next time they get busted they might do what i did what i did this year this past season yeah. huh well deer's looking at me it's do or die at this point i might as well might as well try to make a move on them. You know, hey, yeah. sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But um, yeah, and I just I mean, think I, it's totally wrong. It, it's totally wrong if you don't want to. 
I mean, listen to other what other people have to say. It's you know, yeah, do it yourself. That's fine. But I mean, you you always it don't hurt to have input from everybody. You know. Oh yeah. You just don't, oh, yeah. you don't just say, hey, that guy thinks he knows everything because I don't. I don't know everything. I'm sure Chad don't know. You don't know everything. You know, we all know. you just take it all. As I was saying, I mean, you know, 80% of the reason why I do the podcast is so I can better myself. I'm, I mean, I mean, you know what kind of success I, you know me, you've, you've, you've been around me long enough. You know that I've, I've, where I've been and where I've, what I've done. And, you know, if I'm not learning something new every day, you know, I'm surprised. I don't know. There's, I know this much of, you know, that much that everybody hunts differently and everybody finds success in different ways. And I figure in my life, if the more, the more ways and the more tips, tactics, and things that you can grab from other people that are having success and incorporate it into your own hunting, the more success you're going to have. Cause you're always going to be yeah. faced. You're always going to be faced. The situation is not always going to be exactly the same. And if you can, you know, recall on some information that you've heard or an experience like you, like you're doing, you know, it's over experience that you've had and be able to recall that, it, that what you did right that one time and use it. That's what makes the difference, man. That's success is in the details. So, but uh, yeah, well, thanks for being on. Um, Thank you. I feel uh, you guys going to go up to, do bear hunting in August or yeah. Every year. Okay. Yeah. Uh, last year wasn't that great. I think we seen one bear the year before was, we seen seven bears in one day, you know, right. Um, just depends on, it depends on if it rains. If it, if it don't rain up there, it's, it's not very good. But yeah. Those, those we'll pairs don't come out. Uh, so, that's, you know, and I still haven't killed a bear. <laughs> I've killed everything else. And I still have not got a bear. I shot one, was it last year or the year before? Shot a big boar and I lost it. And I was stoked. You know, I thought for sure my first bear and still yeah. ended up with no bear. <laughs> you know? well, I, that's just, I don't know what it is. I can't get a dang bear. I've got everything else in life, but I can't get a bear. Well, just maybe I like, maybe I'll come down and come out and help you with that because uh, I got a, I kind of got a knack for those guys. I don't. Yeah. I don't ever go here. One, because it's just I get I can't deal with the mosquitoes and the heat. Yeah. But um, the couple times that I have, I've had some success calling. I've had success calling them in. Um. So yeah, maybe we'll yeah. try. To, my maybe we'll try to change it up. We'll we'll do we'll 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 take a little bit of your tactics and we'll find them and uh and then we'll we'll incorporate some of the stuff that I do and maybe we'll be able to make it happen. Yeah, it's, so. it's uh everything goes wrong when I go bear hunting. It's uh sat a water hole this bear came in every morning cuz the rancher said 7:30. So I sat there till 8. I'm like, man, this bear ain't coming in today. I got up and walked 100 yards and that bear was right there. It took <laughs> off. I mean, it's, Everything that can go wrong, bear hunting goes wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so it's one of those things, uh, I'll get it. I'll get it one of these times. <laughs> but, <laughs> all right, man. Well, thanks for right. being on, and uh, I'll talk to you soon, and uh, we'll definitely uh, get out and do some hunting this year. I know last year we uh, was probably the first year we hadn't really get to hunt to each other in a long time. So. Um, yeah, it was pretty busy, and you were busy. And, so. Crazy. All right, sounds good, John. All right, buddy. Talk to you later. Have a good one. Bye. All right.